Hi, Carol here. Warm welcome to my craft room. And we are going to go through my design team project for my creative spirit for the month of November. And it's a 6x8 album. And it is it has a 4 inch spine on the back which is beveled. I'm going to take you through it first. This is something I don't normally do, but because I have been so terribly ill, and unable to get to this. It was 59 hours of work time. I had to edit down and I managed to get two and a half hours for you to get bits and pieces of how to put together an album uh, with only one pack of 8x8 graphic 45 paper. All I had was the 8x8 to work with because in the previous project, it was a tag project, which I used the ATG, uh, ATCs, um, excuse me, not my ATGs, my ATCs. <laughs> so, anywho, yeah, so it's so nice to be back. It is such a pleasure to have you join me in my craft room as we go through somewhat of the makings of this book with the wonderful products that Claire sent me from My Creative Spirit, and that is the 8x8 uh, paper pack from Graphic 45. This is the Ocean Blue Graphic 45 paper, if I didn't mention it before. So we are going to just walk through it. You notice that I just put this down with the glue. I love to use acetate in my albums because it just as a beautiful feature if you do not want to cover up the beautiful paper behind it with, you know, other papers. So there's lots of fold-outs, tuck spots, uh, and really th what I wanted to uh, convey here is that you can make a large album like this with tuck spots and everything if you set your sights on using three different papers. So that would be the black for me, it was the craft paper, and uh, here I used some dyes. I had to come up with some way of getting the same colors and uh, orchestrate them throughout the album, but yet let it flow looking like it was all of one paper pack. You can see here that I put a little tuck spot. I put one on the bottom, a little thicker, so you could put pictures. Lots of pull-out folios that everybody seems to like for larger uh, pictures. I used lots of my jewelry. And here, I just glued down a little turtle. I put glossy accents on these tags that I cut out. You're going to have to focus on other elements if you only have so many papers to work with, right? And that's what I did. I didn't let it get me down that I was going to run out of paper, probably in the first three pages. <laughs> Just kidding you. And I went with the nautical theme. This goes all the way through, which is really nice because not only can you tuck stuff, but you can take a ribbon and tie stuff in there. I used what uh, ATC cards I did have. There are going to be, in each one of these uh, pages, we are going to have those larger ones that I showed you first, where you pulled apart the sections. And I fully went with the nautical thing. I had a uh, embossing folder. I had a, uh, you can see here that it was, um, a stencil, that was what I was trying to say, and I brought that stencil throughout the book so that you had the same theme. I wanted to have waterfall and I wanted to do things differently, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, how I had to lift up this uh, fold, this uh, band, and I put the little fish there. Honestly, it was 59 hours of working three to four hours a day while I was. Uh, healthier and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to be able to do this finish the edit and I'm sorry that oh yes here's another thing don't be sorry Carol just carry on <laughs> I got a stamp set out with fish and nautical theme and I put it underneath and you can get to use your sprays your stash products 
and incorporate all of these elements into your project. And that's what I did with this. And I love the brown tones. They have little eyeballs on them. That's what I'm showing you, my micro little uh, uh, eyeballs, you know, the ones that move. Googly eyes, that's what they call them. And then I had this one tag, and I used it to the best of my ability to hang throughout the project. And I did a lot of uh, coloring and things on the actual papers to bring them alive, so to speak, and to have some fun. Here I'm just tucking some of these uh, little, um, I, I guess they're called ATCs. They're just little uh, pieces that have black on the back that you can write things down. I wanted to incorporate metal, so I put these metal pieces. Uh, we all, I think, have these metal pieces in our stash. And I did a lot of pullouts and tucks. This time I used my white pen, pen my Signal Broad pen, and I drew on top of the um, pictures that were there to make them stand out and then I just spilled glossy accents all over them. This is a fishnet nylon I got at my dollar store where nothing's a dollar. You can tuck a ton in there if you like because there's tons of space behind that nylon. <laughs> fishnet nylons, I mean wow that's way back. I don't think I've ever, I ever wore them actually but I saw them for like um, I don't know four for a dollar fifty pairs and I thought wow I can use that in projects so I beveled it out with the paper I made the paper work for me I put uh, layers of it and then the glossy accents bent it as I was putting on the glossy accents and that's how you get that beveled look more acetate on the back and you can see that I put this uh, canvas ribbon on it I have a porthole that's a shaker with fish inside I have that beautiful map, and here's some of the elements. This is the project I did before my album. It goes with it. It's a four-piece set that I've completed, and then I'm going to do a beautiful uh, nautical... Uh, it's not going to be a box. I think you're going to be really surprised. It's going to look like a treasure chest when I'm done, but to put this all in. I made a shaker on the front. I thought of a dental office. You know how they have these fish, um, uh, oh, can't, the name just escapes me, a fish tank. <laughs> how hard is that? I did an envelope here, as you can see, and I worked the little pieces parts that I had left over of the graphic 45 paper. I did, you know, I used to, uh, let me jump in here, I used to be really intimidated by this thing with the magnets and the push-outs, the pull-outs, the pop-ups, the pop-downs, the slide-outs, the slide-ins. Oh my, I, could, I, could, I just couldn't get my head around it. Now I really have my head around it. <laughs> I have my whole body around it. <laughs> There's so many. And see how it seats in there so beautifully. These are more of the tucks that I showed you before. I just didn't have them finished when I decided to do the edit. Uh, I have the video that Claire did on this extra large pull-out slider. I just added these two push-out tabs. When you flip it, you're going to get all of these areas. And this tape, my friends, changed my card and my album making. To, it brought it to a whole new level, this black tape that Claire uh, invented there. And you don't have to use paper anymore to cover your projects. And, and this is the project where you have the, uh, ba the, the um, plastic bag. You cut it about an inch and a half and you put it around. I tried to show a little bit of it. And that's what I had left over. I even had leftovers. My friends, can you believe it? An 8x8 album. And I have a fish tank that is shaker, and it has fish, it has algae, it has all the things down in the ocean. Now, when I closed, oh, I love bevels. You know I do a lot of bevel cards. I love bevels. It takes this album to a whole new place, doesn't it? Because you have the fish aquarium, that's a better word than tank, aquarium on the front. 
and then you turn it on the side and you have this map and then it has a glass uh, you know like you found this uh, note in a glass bottle and I'll show you how I did that and it's on the paper we're going to go through a whole lot of things so buckle up my friends we're going to have a blast for two and a half hours and I'm only 10 minutes in. <laughs> but you know, I have the gift to gab. And my voice is back and my pneumonia settled down. I think I'm on my third or fourth antibiotic for this bron bronchial pneumonia. And then I caught this kidney thing on oh, my shattered nerves. It was just one thing after another. And it took me days to edit. Can you imagine trying to bring 59 hours of work down? to an hour it was impossible but I did the best I could so that you would be inspired to make an album with an 8x8 pack don't let it uh, don't let it get in the way that you don't have enough of one particular um, uh, paper pack you know you don't have to have uh, a 12 by 12 you know six 8x8 packs uh, ATCs, ATGs, whatever. You just need to have three different types of paper. Two plain and one that you're working with. Now, if this piece of paper isn't the most beautiful ocean scene you have ever seen in your life, I don't know. I can close my eyes and picture myself at the bottom of the ocean because that's the only way I get there. <laughs> I'd have to be, I'd have to be blindfolded. <laughs> And pushed in the water. Water and me, the only thing I have is a shower. <laughs> I heard jacuzzi. I'm not going in the ocean. But look at when you um, cut all these out. And I mean I fussy cut them, okay? Every fin, every hair, every everything that had a place to cut, I cut it. I was so careful. I got out my super duper. Uh, and look at the googly eyes. I got out my super duper uh, scissors, the ones that I don't use for anything but fussy cutting. They're my ginger scissors, I call them. And I did their gills, I did, um, I inked them, I took my Prisma pencils and I made them just come alive. I, I really took my time. <laughs> I really did, it took a month. <laughs> but. <laughs> I can't get laughing or I can't stop coughing. I know what you think. I even took their heads, you know, right there, see at the bottom right? I even chomped their heads there and used those, whatever I could find. The beautiful, beautiful starfish. And then I went around my friends and put glossy accents because they're in the water. I wanted them to look wet and waterish. Oh, yeah. Wet and waterish. And I, excuse me if I'm kind of silly today, but. I'm silly with gratitude of being able to have this YouTube channel and all you wonderful friends that have subscribed to my new subscribers. I know I've been away for a month, but I truly was not well. I'm still not back to myself, you know, health-wise, but I'm working on it. And I'm super duper happy to be a design team member for Claire. And like I said, I'll leave every link to everything that I followed from Claire. We all know Claire. I mean, she is no stranger to the YouTube world, and her creative work is amazing. Now, this is, I followed her instructions to the T for this pullout because it's huge. The only thing I added right here was just putting a quarter inch, um, um, putting it on your score tool scoring it and then you know pressing it down and adding two of them one to the front I think it's two to the front and two to the back I added four see times four so it's a half inch across you can put a gusset in it but I wasn't putting anything bulky because I didn't want to bulk up the album too much so mainly those um, numbers there are for me so I don't forget because in three seconds I do Here's the Tim Holtz roll around. I have a few of these. I really like it because it's metal and my magnets stick to it. See them there? They're all stuck. You can't get anywhere near it. If you had earrings, you'd have your ears stuck on there. <laughs> is there, is there uh, earrings that have uh, 
uh, magnets. I don't know. I don't have any. I let my ears, uh, I don't have pierced ears anymore. But anywho, I took out the size that I wanted and I used the ones that Claire had given me. And see how they stick right to the side of this Tim Holtz uh, wheelie organizing thing, metal thing. And then I made up my own sheet. So I knew the sizes, I knew the thickness. And when you buy these, my friends, get the one, the mil one millimeter, the thinnest you can get but yet be very magnetized, okay? I'll leave links to all that at the end. So here we go. You know I like to stay reasonably organized. I clean up my mess, then I start again. I clean up my mess, and then I focus on what I have when I'm only working with a paper pack, an 8x8 paper pack. Now, where am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> yeah. ah, it's just... Uh, and now I'm thinking, I know this is my design team project, but Carolyn, I know you're watching this, and I pray that your surgery went well. I uh, just want you to know that, because I do know you are watching. And uh, anyway, I could name off so many people that I have in my prayer journal, but this is Claire's time. This is her design team project, and I am blessed beyond measure to be able to design for her and she was very very thoughtful and kind with the products that she did send me so I want to incorporate them and do the best I can with what I have and to be inspirational to each one of you to inspire that's what we're here for right we design on YouTube to inspire one another so anyway, this is how I did this. I'm going to try, I tried to incorporate all of the shortcuts for you. One way to do this if you're cutting a lot is to just put non-permanent runner tape behind the ATC paper and then cut it. Oh, fish. Oh, get away from there. Oh, yeah, I like fish. We know you do. Scoot, scoot. There you go. So here I'm putting my micro googly eyes to the far right in my container there. And anything that had eyes, they got googled. Googly. They got googlied. And uh, just fun, fun paper to work with. Uh, you can see that I have the glossy accents on there. And I'm going to tell you, I did love working with all of Claire's product. The tacky glue... The PVA tacky glue, you'll see me using it. Oh, yes. And why not have a tuna salad? Tuna, fish. Yes, I went with it. I'm telling you, when I'm creating, you know I always eat when I create. What better thing is a nice cold tuna salad? I put apples in mine, my friends, just so, uh, you know, a little bit of bacon with my tuna, the can of tuna and some noodles and some, uh, Miracle Whip, like that's for free. I'm sharing that with you. Okay, eyelets. I never had that down either until the last year. Uh, my friend Tina helped me with that, putting eyelets on. And now I could put eyelets on anything. I could probably close my eyes and put eyelets on. They won't be straight, but they'll be on without being all squished and the paint falling off and flattened. I've got that down now and I love it. I got to use my brads. All I did here was just fold the piece of paper up, fold it back on itself, put some little eyelets, and then I get to use some stash. Um, oh, well, let's take some food first. You know, you, you have to fill yourself up when you're creating, right? So I took some of this uh, kind of like a rope thread, thicker thread. Um, it's not a... You couldn't put that in your sewing machine. But anyway, I got spools and spools of it from a thrift store one time in this great, big, beautiful sewing basket. And I'm talking a basket. All of those real big spools, you know, that start skinny and get fat at the end. And they're full of all of this threads and wool. Um, I'm trying to think. Cotton. That's what this is. This is cotton black. And, oh, yes, the little birdie stuff. Woo, this is fun. Yes, it is. Thank you for dropping in. And then I'm going to, um, this is so you can tuck behind, but I wanted to be able to tuck under. 
Whatever I could think of a piece of paper could squeeze in there, that's what I did. Right now, I don't know what I was doing, probably grabbing a napkin and, you know. Oh, yes, what I did was I'm just going to stick this down so that the bows stay in the position that I want them to stay in. And uh, that was really nice. Isn't that pretty? You can still put bows on a nautical thief, and that's wonderful. Look at that seahorse. I end up putting a googly eye and some water, you know, on it. I don't know if that's uh, glued in there. Uh, I don't want to take the time to have to look at it. Now, Claire is known. She taught me this. Thank you, Claire. Uh, I used to do it, you know, once in a while. But now, anything that has a string on the end, I try to match up the theme with a piece of the paper. So here it's starfish, right? So at the end of my bows, it's going to have little starfish. And once I clean all the goobity goop out of there, and I'll put this, and then they had those uh, those round things that you get. There's my Ginger 4-inch scissors that I use. And then I took out, and then, and then, and then, I don't like to say that all the time, I'm sorry, my Copics. Uh, this is a B3-9 and I uh, used a, let me see, a B26 and a B69. I love the 39 because it goes over into the green blue. I just love it. But it, whatever works for you, I went around all the edges. I colored in whatever I could color in. I did all the edges of my tags. It was like I took my time and I wanted to, uh, oh, here's the little owl container. If you see these candle metal containers like this, they fit a little glue gun perfectly. So um, this is my little inspirational tips I'm going to throw in there. And one thing I love is uh, stripe paper in nautical. I mean, Graphic 45 really did it. I took my stork scissors out too. Uh, these are called dollars, aren't they? The little dollars. Uh, I can't see. I can't see. Excuse me, Carol. Get, get, yeah, there. That's better. I don't know if these are... I don't even know. But they were in the paper, so they have to be something to do with nautical, right? And then... See, I did it again. And then. Those little ticks that you get. Uh, it's better than going, you know... Um, 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 you know, there's all kinds of things we do because we're nervous. And I'm really not nervous. I love you joining me in my craft room. You know that. I feel like you're all here with me as I am preparing and caring and sharing. That's what I like to do. So here you go. I just put it down there and it looks like we're going to move forward on this. I don't know. Oh, I'm cutting the edges of the... Um, cotton thread here. And isn't that pretty? You get to use not only your cotton uh, threads, you get to use your brads, you get to use your uh, eyelets, all these things we've had in our stash forever. Now this is where the tape comes in. You have to look up Claire's tape. This, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you that when I make the album. This is just little tidbits I'm going in there. This is just placed down with the black tape. How quick and easy is that? You know, if you wanted this fold to be long, let's say uh, half an inch instead of a quarter inch showing on the inside, put the black tape in there. So many wonderful ways. That there it is. I tell you what, I'm going to have to order lots of that tape. I can't be without it. There's just so many projects that I used so many ideas I used in this project. Here we go, I'm doing it right here. It adds stability, it adds the good looks, it adds everything you want. It folds beautifully. I can't say not one negative thing. I have to have lots of it in my craft space. That's all I can say. And the tacky glue, the PVA. I guess in the UK, that's the way you do it. PVA glue. I used to hear it all the time. I used to think, what's PVA stand for? I didn't even know. I thought it was like this super duper special kind of a glue, you know. 
And then I guess it's just like our white glue. It dries clear. That's a bonus. And here I'm just running those tags through. There you go. And there's so many fun things. If you have a day and you don't really want to work on the big stuff of your album, grab a tag and and then grab some pencils or, like I did, my white uh, pen, my Signal Broad, my white Signal Broad pen. And on black, it looks beautiful. There's my little stamps. I bought those stamps for a dollar and a quarter at uh, Michael's. A uh, big, uh, like a bucket of nautical little wooden stamps. And I have not used them. And look at that. I was able to get them out and just stamp away on all different things. Took my distress inks and I, you know, for going over the edges as you see me here. I love the little extras. You know, that's kind of what I'm known for is detail because I think, you know, if, if you don't do detail and it's nice and clean, that's a good look too. I, I'm not trying to say that, you know, details are the thing. No, some people just like that extra, extra. And uh, that's, you know, probably why my tutorials are 50 hours long. <laughs> But here we go, LDRS Hybrid Inks, beautiful. This navy is gorgeous. Now see those seashells? Look how they look. Oh, excuse me, oh, oh, excuse me. Oop, get away from here. I just went over what was in the background there uh, with the white gel pen and brought this these tags to a different level, didn't it? And then I covered all the tags with glossy accents so they were firm. They were thick, just the fronts, because in case you want to journal on the back. And I didn't cover everything. You do want to see some of the actual graphic work in the paper. But, um, you know, I just sat there and doodled. That's what's called doodling. And, uh, yeah, and then when you put the glossy accents on there, brings that paper alive. Add some dots, you know, some little air dots down there. I always think of bloop, 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 bloop. that's my interpretation <laughs> of what I'm doing. I've lost my mind, right? And I hope I don't lose my voice as I'm going on here because I've had laryngitis. I've had it all, my friends. You know if I'm not on my channel, I'm not doing well uh, as far as health. I had a three-day migraine this past weekend that was terrible. This, if you suffer from migraines, mine are barometric. Uh, I really, you can leave me a message and I will put you in my prayer journal. So anyway, this is Claire's time. I have to remember that this is my design team project. I'm putting some lines around the edges and this is the fun stuff. This is the little fun stuff that you get to do on your project, right? Uh, and it, it, I don't know, brings it to a new level. I did these tags not even thinking that I'm going to run out of the paper. It was more at the beginning stage of the album when you're just thinking up all of the stuff that you want to do. Now, I included this. I love Colorbox Pigment Ink. Pigments like hybrid. Well, pigment is at the other end of the spectrum. It takes a while for it to dry, and that's why I like it. You can put in, you can do your whole project and put embossing powder on it because it stays wet long. So you have your dyes, dye inks. They don't, they dry. If you think dye, they dry immediately. Dye dry. Then you have your hybrid in the middle, and then you have your pigment. Here I'm just looking for a nice little brush to use. And I guess I took a sponge just to see which one I would like better. And uh, we're going to put some beautiful rays coming out. Like, uh, you know, you see on ocean scenes where the sun is coming down into the depths. And the deeper you get, the darker it gets. And at the top, it's so lusciously white. So I'm trying to do that. I just cut two triangles, two pieces of paper is all you need, some scratch paper. And then go to town with how dark or how light you like it.
See that? How thick or how thin you like it. And I'm making the rays like they're coming out of the hole in the tag on the top. Isn't that pretty? I just love it. You can tap it, you can slide it. You can do whatever you want and it looks beautiful. Just another little inspiring mo tidbit moment, you know, that if you want to do something special with your tags and you want it to have the theme of the ocean, this is one of them. Then sprinkle on your clear embossing powder and then you get the wet look that, you know, correlates with all the rest of what you have done throughout this album and I think it's stunning. I love detail, even if it's working on a thimble. <laughs> Any type of space that I can find where I can add a little bit of detail, a little bit of imagination. On these stamps, I had some little bubbles, so I put them in there. Tiny bubbles. I don't know if I get in trouble for that, but all I could think of, I'll share this with you when I was creating this. This is my clear embossing powder, and then I'll heat set it. It looks beauteous. Was um. Somewhere beyond the sea, she's waiting for me. Da 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 da, da and watching the ships that go sailing. There you go. <laughs> Boy, was that bad. Now, you know I love this creep. There's two. There's Burt's Bees and Distress Glaze. Distress Glaze goes over top so that your inks don't smear, especially if you're mailing envelopes. And Burt's Bees Cream, it's a, a milk cream, smells beautiful. You get it at your pharmacy, uh, at where all of your hand lotions are, but it is identical to uh, Tim Holtz Glaze, okay? Distress Glaze. It's like a Vaseline that dries and protects everything underneath it. And I came, you know, I had Burt's Bees, and I thought, look at they look like the same consistency, scientifically speaking, and I started using it, and you get double the amount of product for 50% or 60% less. So I'm going on a glossy accent craze there. I'm going on a frenzy, just putting my glossy accents everywhere, see? And now I'm going to glue the black paper behind this paper so that, without getting it all over, so that you can journal on the back of these. I think of these like uh, motel, do not disturb uh, things you put on your door. That's kind of what came to my mind when I saw this tag. And I love it because you can use your jewelry and glue it down and then put your door hanger topper there through your piece of jewelry. In my case, I used turtles, I used seahorses, I used fish, all of this beautiful ceramic jewelry. I had a jewel stash for making jewelry. I got it all out. Okay, let's stop everything right here. Okay, this is the six by eight sheets. These, this cardboard is made for um, putting in between your, well in our case, cards. Whatever you want to ship and protect. You buy these sheets, you get a hundred per pack. I get them at BD's, my stationery store here in Canada. And they're wonderful, but they're thick but not super thick. So I needed to put two of them together to make my album, just to give it that stability I wanted. So to do that, I took out Granddaddy, my Granddaddy, um, Oh my, I just lost it there. Can you believe it? My Xyron machine. Oh yeah. Well, I had to cut it down first. So now this is Granddaddy cutting machine. <laughs> my Fiskars. And I love this one because it cuts and it you never have to buy a blade. It self-sharpens. This big baby. I love this machine, but it takes up so much space on my island that I have to put it away and get it out when I'm using it. And it cuts like butter. Just right through. So I'm going to make my, uh, I'm going to need uh, two, four, four sheets that are six by eight and I'm going to need four 
are two sheets that are four inches by eight inches. Your eight inches is the length of the album, right? Now comes my Xyron, great big machine. And I'm going to run these through because not only am I going to use the Xyron glue for this, my friends, I also use liquid glue over top just to be careful, just to be sure it doesn't shift. I know this Xyron, it would not. It's just, you know, sometimes that's just the way you think. And you just have to run with it. And look at that. You just take the top pieces off. And can I just say, don't throw away those top pieces, the plastic uh, gluey sheets that come off. Because if you make a nice little ball with that, and you have a die cut that's intricate with a lot of holes, you run that uh, ball all the way through and on top and the glue on that ball of Xyron runner you know that's underneath that plastic sheet will pick up all of the goobies and you won't have any between your dies okay that's just a helpful hint and here we go I am just uh, me and those crazy scissors I don't know I measured them and for some reason I just end up having to cut a little bit somewhere. Isn't it the truth? There we go. All done. And take the backing off, turn it around. Then I have some, the reason why I do this, let me just jump in here again, is so that it's mobile. I get to move it around and it doesn't stick immediately because we all know Xyron tape is the ultimate tape. So here we go, we have the four inch by eight inch spine, two six by eight inch pieces for the back and the front. Now comes this fabulous, fabulous tape. You put a piece on the top like this, right on the edge, then you go down with your, pinch it down, this is what you're gonna see when you put your paper on. Go all the way around, pinch it down, you don't have to add any black paper. Look at how quick this is for album making. Don't touch the end parts until you get to it. So you know you need the top, the bottom, and the side. You're not going to need the inside piece because that's when you get around to working with your spine, right? So here you cut a little piece. Whoop! Get out of the way there. Pushies. You just cut a piece on the triangular side take your bone folder and fasten it down. So you're just cutting it in the middle and then you're scoring it. See how I cut it right in the middle? Move it over. There we go. Then I'm going to take my bone folder, pull it up. This is Claire's bone folder too, by the way. Uh, that is from my Creative Spirit, if you're interested. It comes in a pack of two, this long one and a curved shape bone folder. And here we go. I'm just cutting it and pressing it down. I will leave the link to the video of Claire sharing this wonderful product. She came up with this uh, tape for doing albums and so much more, so much more. But see how you don't have to add how much paper you save by using this tape? Now you can just place your front and back paper down and you have your background of a quarter inch or however, you know, up to a half an inch, I suppose. But I'm doing this again. See how I'm just pulling it? I'm fastening it. Uh, I'm taking it off there. I, I thought I'd try this way, where I just cut it like this. I left the tape hanging, and I thought, wow, can I do it? You know, I'm always trying to look for ways to save time. And back it up now because it got stuck. Yes, but look it. You can unstick it, just, well, I could have unstuck it, but I didn't there. Let me just see what I'm doing. And don't waste it. Don't waste it. I set that aside. You saw it didn't go down the garbage. I'm going to take it apart. But I wanted to um, start again at the top, just at the top, and look it. It's like you never made a mistake. I just love it. And you know I always keep my boo-boos in my, in my work so that you can see that there is a way to always figure it out. There I cut the triangle edges and I'm just going to tuck and push down and it's all done. The corners look gorgeous. They just look professional, I'm telling you. 
you know. And if you have to correct something, pull it up. It's not going to stay stuck right away. I love the feel of this too. May I add that? When you're doing it, you know it is a good product. It's a fantastic product. So there you have it. All the way around you have, we're on the way, we're on the way, my friends, of creating a beautiful album. And look it with this tape. I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see Claire show how it's done and that she actually came up with this method to save you paper and time and have a beautiful look to your album. It's fantabulous. So here I'm just folding the top right there. Just You just want, there, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Like, you know, there's no scientific uh, way of doing it that you have to come up with, you know, doing it. All you have to make sure is it's folded and you try to get all the uh, creases out. That's all it is, just the creases. And look at that. Just wonderful. So you do the top and the bottom for now. That's it. Do the top and the bottom of your spine. So you went all the way around the outside. Now we're going to rip it off. You just need to know, uh, keep about an inch on each side. Put it down and now you're going to take the left hand side uh, that would be the front of your album cover. Lay it down like this, then fold it over on your desk right around. And there you have it. You have that little sixteenth of an inch gap, the little valley that you need, and then you're going to fold in the two tabs that are sticking out there. One and two. Just fold it in. It's going to go right down into your valley. And you're going to now rip another piece of that tape and you're going to cover that. How wonderful it is. And I make sure that I cut off the end so it's not raggedy. And there you have it. Look at that. Our album is almost complete. Then you can add your papers. I think it's wonderful. This is wonderful. If anything you see in this whole creation of this album, I hope that you uh, would give this tape a try. I think you're really going to love it. Those that use it on their albums, they don't turn back to putting the paper on. They go just with the tape and then add their paper. I am pretty sure, I know it comes in black because I'll leave the little video because this way the black is uh, light. Yes, you have to light us down. I'll talk about it in a minute. Lay it down. You have it. Fold it up and then fold back. There you go. And it's already push it out just a little bit. So you have that, uh, and it'll be a perfect sixteenth of an inch um, gap, like gully, um, valley, whatever you want to call it. And you can see how gorgeous this looks when you get the paper on. It looks like you have actual black paper underneath. It, it's wonderful. Now we're going to secure it here. Uh, you're not going to see it, so being perfectly even doesn't matter. You just want it reasonably there. And then take your bone folder and go in and look at that. Isn't that amazing? This is the most exciting thing about this whole album. I couldn't wait to show you. Um, it's wonderful. Now, you're going to take, in my case, I uh, use the orange tape that Claire sent me. This is very sticky. You want a piece on the outside and the inside at the end part of your tape. So not past the tape on the inside, but don't go in the gully. Don't go in the valley. No, no. Just go on the outside here. But I'm going to show you. I made a boo-boo, but I'll show you after. You can, um, when you're working with the paper, now go down it with your bone folder and uh, make sure it's all. there's no bubbles in there. That way it's all going to stick in the right way. Then you cut a piece of paper that's 8 inches. I'm going to show you how I did this. So it's 8 inches long and then about an inch, uh, like a half an inch on each side. Now, can you tell what I did wrong? I didn't put the tape on the upper and the lower paper going across. So when you fold that, I have this big air pocket, right? 
because I didn't secure it with tape. I knew once I went this far, I'm going, why does it keep bubbling? I'm looking at the top and the bottom. Uh-oh, uh-oh, yikes. Uh-oh, yeah, get it off. Here I went. See, I don't even hesitate. Just rip it off, you know? It, it's just paper. You can get another piece, hopefully, of black paper. Just get your pokey tool and get it out of there, and we're going to start all over. I even took, that was a distraction. <laughs> that was a fish distraction. But I took the orange tape off as well. I just wanted you to see that I did that. So you want to remove that, make it as smooth as you can, and uh, just don't worry there. So we're starting all over again. So I'm doing my orange tape on the outer side, orange tape. And I did go out past the tape. Uh, but it didn't hurt anything, which was nice. It's just you don't want to go too far over. But uh, I don't know. It depended how I was working here with how I, uh, what I decided. But you want to make sure you get those bubbles out of the tape. Now let's go. You want to put, you want to secure this sheet of paper with tape all the way around on the paper. So whoop, get one down and now the top. Part, you have the bottom with the orange tape plus you have the orange tape on the actual cardboard that's seated down on my island there and we're going to turn it around I'm just getting this little piece of goober off and we're going to turn it around come on Carol turn that thing around I'm just making sure I get that off there you go you can do it I don't know what happened there isn't that funny you just don't want it to uh, raise up and look like something was, you know, a bead or something was stuck there. Then as close as you can, get it on there. Oh, yeah. I would have used some liquid tape, but I, with the frustration, I guess, of having to rip the paper off before, I just went for it because I thought, well, I can always rip it off again. <laughs> no problemo. And see how there's no bubbles. It's all stuck down. Woo! Yay! I love this. And look how clean that looks with the black tape on the top and the bottom. You would never know it's tape. Never. When you see this album, you think it's beautiful, luxurious black paper. And um, now I'm just making sure I measure everything to put my paper on so that I have an eighth of an inch all the way around so it looks pretty and it looks... Um, professional kind of you know as professional as I could get it I want it to be an eighth of an inch I don't want it to slowly go up to or down to a sixteenth of an inch or up a half an inch I want it all to be quarter of an inch all the way around when I seat my paper there we go bloop, 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 there and now I am going to measure for the spine that's why the Tim Holtz measuring ruler comes in handy here then I'm going to cut my papers down. Now I have to tell you, the spine. Okay, this is your actual, um, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to leave the link for this one, okay? I'm going to leave the link for Claire's uh, inside on the spine because I did it a half an inch so that I had a space of a half an inch. Then I realized I needed more than that. So I went to a three quarters of an inch space in between my pages. But Claire has the perfect video. Simple, quick, and easy. So I will leave that in the description as well as over on my blog for the pages. And I left three quarter inches on mine. And I love the way Claire's folds down flat. So I think you will love this tutorial. And it's short and sweet. <laughs> yes. So here's my burlap sheets you know I've showed this in many of card videos I love this because it already has the sticky on the back you just have to peel back it is a natural burlap it's in its natural state and you can pull back the uh, material so that you get the frayed edges that makes it look very vintage and um, I just love it I don't I'm going to look for this because I've had this in my stash for four or five years I bought it. So I will look for it and leave the link. 
but um, I wanted to have something stable because I didn't put Tyvek on there and you really don't have to have Tyvek on this because the tape actually takes the place of the Tyvek as well. But because I wanted this to look vintage, I thought that the sheets of this would be fabulous, you know, very raw, very um, oceany, if I can call it that, on um, this. So I'm going to show you that I put the tape down first. I'm going to release all of that off, and then we're going to put the sticky back um, on here. But first, I want it to look like ocean waves. So I took my glue gun and I made all of these wonderful ridges with the actual glue so that when I go to put my burlap on there, you're going to see that, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it attracted the fish as well. I just turned my pokey tool around and got down into the edges so that the stickiness of the burlap would go down into the edges of the glue that I made. Now you can make any type of design you want with your glue gun. I just thought this would be like ocean waves and it would give me uh, that look, that um, 3D look I was going for. Then I'm going to fray some more of the edges on the top and bottom. I think you see it there. I really did have to go super fast in my editing for you. I had to take out, you know, like I said, about 55, 56 hours of work, but it it all worked out. I think you're going to see everything that I wanted uh, to inspire you with, you know, that I did. Mainly, it was that this album was made with, um, well, I'm just taking it off so that I have it even on the top and the bottom, and then I'll take some frays off after I cut it. I wanted you to see some of the black tape and I wanted it to be the same measurement on the top as the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, You pretty well know if you craft right. We know why we're doing the things we do. But um, I liked this effect. Now I'm going in the stripes. This is the front and the back. Is that not gorgeous? I mean anything nautical if you have like a deep red or a deep navy is beautiful. So I put the double-sided tape here, and uh, yeah, here we go. Put it on, take your bone folder, press it up. Love the tape. You just go along the tape with the top of your bone folder. Oh yeah, the fish are getting into it now. They're just liking it. And here are some of the, it looks like stamps, you know, um, memorable stamps or something like that of the ocean. It was so pretty. Now I want to go and because it's on the edge here, I didn't want to see the paper edge. So I thought with this beautiful um, uh, cotton thread on the cotton fiber of the, um, oh, I keep losing that name, don't I? My burlap sheets can't believe it. I didn't want you to see where it started and where it ended. And I thought with the nautical theme going on here, I thought this uh, wool, um, thread, the natural, you can see it's on a bolt. Nice and thick, 100% cotton, as is the back, you know, this actual spine with my, my uh, it's kind of like a canvasy, thin. It's so pretty. Anyway, so that's what I was doing there. You'll see that later on. Now I want to show you what I did as far as a um, fish tank, a fish aquarium. Now I had some cards that were pre-cut with this uh, space empty in the center, but you can take your dies and make it the right size for your album by just cutting out the inside guts and leaving the outside frame. So I have my acetate on there. I'm going around with my half inch tape. It's perfectly half inch, isn't that awesome? So I get to use that. And for stability, you know I have to have three, four, five layers of cardstock because this uh, card, it was a flip up card with the empty, like I said, to put as a shaker. 
it's very thin. It's not a thick. Uh, I'd say it's about, I don't know, maybe 60 pound. It's not very thick, but you keep adding layers and then take those old scissors. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. I have that flower. Um, I got it at Michael's, you know, and it has all the leaves and it has all stuff like that. I ended up taking off some of those strips to make my elements for the inside of the aquarium. Here I'm showing you all you need to do if you run out of paper is grab black and craft and start die cutting. This one I wrecked. But I picked it back out of the garbage because I thought, Carol, just cut it in half. You don't have to cut the booboo off. So I did. I got it out of the garbage. And here I just got out a set and I started die cutting a ton of pieces, elements, that would be for putting uh, pictures on or tucking them down, tuck spots. You can see I have all of my fussy cut fishes. Fushy cut, fushy, <laughs> fushy cut fishes. Say that 10 times. Um, yeah, so that's all I did. I just matched up the navy. Isn't that a pretty uh, die? Simplistic. It has the nautical thing going on in the pattern of the die. I loved it. I just loved it. And that's, you know, pretty well it. Then I grabbed some craft thick cardstock. I put my glossy, no, this was my Mod Podge. And my Mod Podge was in matte, I think. This was matte. I try to keep to the matte, but it wouldn't have, it would have looked good if I had have, uh, went with the uh, shiny as well, you know, either or. Uh, tomato, tomato, it would both look great. And then I had this tissue paper. And I thought, this is going to look like a nice map, you know, like an old vintage pirate map. That's what I was thinking. I'm going to roll up the top and roll up the bottom, and I'm going to use that. So I set it aside to dry. I mean, you can see all the... I even had my oranges. You know, you buy the tangerines, and you get that uh, kind of plasticky looking fish net thing going on in the t upper right. But I ended up using the fishnet stockings instead. And I love it if you have craft uh, envelopes. Because all you do is just glue and tuck. And you can make three or four pages to have some flip things going on. And that's what I did. I, uh, on, you know, I think Claire probably has a video on making an envelope like this. They're all over YouTube on making an envelope uh, flip book. Um, they do it at a bay, you know, your bills, the envelope bills where they have the shiny stuff uh, staring through at you there. And um, yeah, so I had these in. This, this was because I knew I was going to run out of paper. So I wanted to do some tucks and, and see if they're envelopes, you're just adding paper inside. Or you're gluing the flap to the bottom or the top to add more flips and flops. It is amazing. That's all you have to do is just have your scoreboard and start running a quarter inch line or half inch line, whatever you want. Add your magnets and there you have it, my friends. You have another element for your album. And that's, it's so funny because I kept making elements, but I knew I was running out of paper. <laughs> is that a mo oxy, <laughs> excuse me, is that an oxymoron or what, right? I, I know I don't have much paper, but I'm going to keep adding more paper that I need to have paper on top of. But what happens is you add the black on top of the craft and then it all coincides it all makes sense in the end, and it ends up being a nice project. I'm very happy with it. I hope Claire is very happy with it as well. And um, there we go. So here, I was thinking of the kind of algae, that floating stuff in the ocean. And this uh, punch did it for me. I think it's supposed to be twigs, but it did look like that um, floating algae. That's all I can think of. And so I used that for the ends of this envelope uh, little album that I made to tuck into my main album for my design team project. 
and it was a lot of a lot of fun a lot of fun a lot of stretching your imagination and going the extra mile now I had this Cricut paper okay let me go with this it's so chopped up because I had to take so much out but this is Cricut liner and it comes in rose gold gold silver and rose gold gold silver there's four different colors of gold and silver anyway I love the fact that this Cricut paper, even though it's silver, it's not uh, shiny, you know, straight silver, where if you put your nail on it, you'd have a mark. It has these wonderful patterns on them that I really like, as you can see. So I worked with that, but I'm going to tell you ahead of time, super duper sticky. Oh yes, watch. This was crazy, and especially if you're putting it on like a 60-pound paper here. Well, I guess I doubled it up to get, look at me trying to get it off. <laughs> there is no way you're going to get this back up, and so you're just going to give it that vintage look, or you can do what I did, and that is to fill that side up with some ocean scenery and jewelry and cutouts from Fussy Cutting. But it did work out well. I did love really love the look of this being an aquarium front, you know, a fish tank sort of thing. So for little fishes, no, not dogs. Oh, yes, he just likes to drop by with anything sticky. And I raised this up twice um, eventually here. I didn't speed this up. Isn't that funny? I'm putting tape down, and I don't speed it up. It's like... Uh, slow motion showing you how to paint a wall <laughs> yeah so but that'll be gone soon enough so this is going to be in the front of our cardstock and uh, there I'm adding another one I know I only did it two layers I don't think I did it three layers and I want to share something with you if you have a uh, canister for your Copics that um, you know to spray with your Copics you could spray the sides of your um, scotch tape, you know, your that lifts up. If you don't want to see the white, you can match the color with that. Um, that's what I'm going to show you. I did with, I did straight Copics on just the little sides. I just colored it in so it did, it wasn't stark white. But I'll show you that later on. So here's that envelope that I had made, and with with an envelope, especially if you only use three or four tucks putting the envelope inside the envelope, all you have to do is get all sizes of paper, get your bone folder, score a quarter of an inch, half an inch, however you know many inches that you need, and um, just start sliding them here, there, and everywhere. And what's nice is, you know, I told you about this kind of algae looking thing I did with the twig. Uh, punch from Martha Stewart there it just uh, if you ghost it and move it over just a tad I'm just dotting this um, if you ghost it move it over you can do a light color with a dark color and it looks beautiful and like I said and then just add some little fish from the paper something that will bring the paper into the project because we are still um, I'm still going to say we're working with 8 by 8 one pack of 8 by 8 paper. So this is how I do, I put a glue dot on the back of the uh, magnet so that it will stick down. That's when I marry it up to the other one so that they're together and then I just fold it back on itself. Then I will put the double sided tape on here just for security. And you don't want to put too much because you lose a bit of the magnetization here. But it works. So that's an easy way of putting magnets on. And I learned that the hard way. You put your magnet down. I'm just going to show you here. Let me see. I'm looking to see if I have magnets somewhere else that it, I may not have to use it. But I put a magnet down. I cover it with double-sided tape. I turn it over. I put a magnet on top of this one, the one that marries together, and then I put a glue dot on top of the inside magnet, fold it down. That glue dot will make the magnet stick on the other side of the paper. Then I put double-sided tape over top of that. 
and that's how easy peasy it is. Now these are all the pages that are going to go inside the album. Now all of the this album link I'm going to leave for you so you can see how uh, Claire does these the, how she does these pages um, opposed to you know the way other people do them. She really has a unique pattern style to do this and you can see how I just fold down the edge of the double-sided tape so that I can catch it later on. I put it down, there you go, just in case I had to move it and then I will slide it off and stick her down. And there you have it. You have a pull-out and a magnet. Now this is the inside spine. I wanted it to be three-quarter inches in between each gap. So I'm just scoring the paper I didn't leave measurements because this link is over on Claire's blog. And uh, you're just going to fold every other um, section here. You're going to put double sided tape on either side. And it's easy peasy. And then you're going to miter the edges on both sides. You just make sure it fits on your project. And I will put tape going across there and you can just see I'm putting it on the inside so that I can fold it over and it will stick and it will have the the um, what do you call them the spine thingy dingy <laughs> yeah my brain's not working you're gonna have that lift on each one of them and then I took my six inch uh, sequin tape, put it on the back because that is an easy fix for putting it down to your project. Oh, I had a little bit showing. And then I added a little sixteenth of an inch piece. Depends on how or what size your project is. I make sure that, um, and I'm watching Claire as you can see. Ooh, they must be going to school. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm making sure I'm doing it exactly, following it like Claire as far as putting the spine pieces in here so that I can put the pages on. And you can see the difference. The first time I did it, I did it with a quarter inch gap in between each page. You don't want that here. I'm just mitering all the edges so when I slide down my pages, nothing is going to catch. It's going to give me some relief. And now is when you're going to put the tape on either side of that and then just miter it and go through and do the whole thing. And it works. It is rather fast with Claire's method here. Anything that Claire does on her site, I can tell you, it has been perfected. So when you go over there, you know, like with me, I'm trying this, trying that. But when I follow the instructions with Claire, it's uh, oh, it's so easy, especially for things like this. Now you can decorate your style, decorate your uh, album the way you know you uh, your creativeness adds to it. But as far as the instructions of how to put it together, I'll leave the links for that because I really do think it's quicker to follow somebody that knows what they're doing. <laughs> Opposed to somebody that's experimenting, taking it off because they didn't do it, you know, right? And the they, it's me, you know, doing this. Then I'm going to press it down and I'm super happy. I end up having four pages there and with a three-quarter inch in between each page so that I can add um, uh, some bulk to it. And it's not going to affect the album at all. Now we'll just add each one of the pages and as you can see they have uh, they've been measured out and folded over so that I have um, a tuck spot and then I have a tuck spot that goes all the way through on the back and this will be on a link as well which will make it super easy when you get to this part of your album you can just pop over and Claire will show you how to do this very simple. That's why I made a 6x8 um, album, because the measurements, you know, are easy peasy to follow. 
four inch spine gives you a lot of room because we are going to do a beveled uh, we're going to add a bevel to the back on the spine and uh, it comes together wonderfully I think I've done a bevel on at least 30% of thing you know creative things that I do as far as cards and projects and then you will have a space to put your little um, I'm just looking to see if they fit uh, your envelope album and then you have those two pullouts now the reason why and I'm so glad I had this in my stash this canvas ribbon uh, and it's really not ribbon it's canvas with that uh, exact cotton twine on the outside edges decorated is when I shut the album it was a little short for the pages. I don't know what happened there, but this remedied it, remedied, remedied, this remedied it. <laughs> it remedied the situation and made it so that you thought it just flowed with the actual design of the album. It didn't look out of place to me, and that way I'm going to be able to add my closure to the actual uh, canvas part here. And it really did add to the album. I really liked it, and I was really glad to find it in my stash. That's why I always say stash is good. <laughs> Go right around with your hot glue. End it at the other end. It gives you such uh, nice, thick security as far as, you know, being able to open and close it and uh, add whatever you want. You could add some jewelry ends to that like we did our waterfall that's coming up all kinds of wonderfulness now I love these long these are the cotton thread that I put it's not thread the cotton um, twine I almost have to write that down because twine and thread get intermingled in my brain so anywho let's go back to that this is where I like, this is where I like to stop, let me say that, and start the decorating. It's so cute and uh, an ocean scene because it doesn't have a, an actual pattern that you have to be sure to follow. Um, I just thought it was great. I thought it was a great design. Uh, Graphic 45 is nice and thick and the craft paper went along the color was almost exact with the color in the paper pad, which was an 8x8 paper pack. And you could see that that small paper pack went a long way when you just die cut matching papers, solid papers that match the design papers that you have. hope that makes sense. And I got to use that specific die quite a bit throughout this album. And like for time's sake, you can see I'm now down to 2 hours and 23 minutes. I'm trying to cut it down as much as I can as I am doing the voiceover. So work with a lot of your dies. We have a lot of dies in our stash, I'm sure. I mean, you only need a few. And then you have your beautiful uh, fussy cut fish and uh, starfish and shells and everything that we cut out. And I'm looking to see if there's anything else I can cut out of this one um, or what I'm going to do with that because I did want to use every single bit of the paper pack that I could fit into this actual album and use up the gra Graphic 45 paper. Now, we the front cover here, as you can see, is going to be sideways, right? It's not going to be in the vertical position. It's going to be horizontal. And I'm going to place down like I did here, and it's not tucked down. I can lift this up to take the glue. I'm just trying to get my bearings together on what I want to cover and what I don't want to cover on it. So that's a good thing to do is just set things down before you stick them, because you know me. And uh, here's some of those plastic leaves that I got at uh, Michael's on a plant. And uh, I always pick up stuff like this, you know, the algae looking stuff and the little trees for miniature houses. And that way you can cut it up when you, for, you know, 
designs like this and actually have this fish tank look like a fish tank or look like the bottom of the ocean. Now, if I had to do this again, the only thing I would do different is I would put gesso over top of the greenery. I would just paint some gesso on it. It was really, uh, you know, there was no variation. There wasn't much variation in the green colors. And if you're wanting your project to look a little bit more vintage, I would add a cream colored uh, gesso. You know, add a little bit of paint if you want. Even white would have looked nice. But we're going with the cotton. Ooh, yes, they're just happy. They can't wait to get in there. And I would add a little bit of gesso to the plants that are in here. But I do remedy that because every time I looked at it, it just was too green. There was too much green. So I didn't think of it yet, but I'll show you what I do when all of a sudden my head, my brain goes, boing, there's too much green, Carol, you've got to do something. And then that's when I follow through and grab another die. It's a twine die where it looks like hanging twine and it solved the problem perfectly. So now we're going to put the fish in the center. I'm going to scoop out some colors from all of my prills and um, all kinds of beads that I have. I have the blue and the green there. Kind of put them all down and then I'm going to stick this down. Oh yeah. And I'm going to use hot glue gun on the sides because I don't want anything to escape. That way it will protect and hold down the actual uh, aquarium front which is supposed to look like glass and look at that Cricut paper that foiled Cricut paper isn't that beautiful I just love that pattern in there that scattered look and I'm just adding my hot glue and then that situation is taken care of I, I took out a lot of twine a lot of different uh, colors you know I wanted to match the bottom uh, there with the twine and the cotton um, ribbon there at the bottom. I wanted to put some of those tassels on there, so I decided to use two colors here that are inside the colors that are inside this paper pack from Graphic 45. So um, I just took the old glue gun, went around so that I had tassels, one color on one side and one color on the other. And then I put that uh, twine, cotton twine, I put that around there too and I tied it in like a sailor's knot, which for me is take it and tie it twice. <laughs> I'm not a sailor. <laughs> a sailor's knot, that sounded hysterical. But um, yeah, so in that corner down there, I decided to just do a double knot, let it hang, just so some of the patterns of what I did on the inside will follow through on the outside of this fish aquarium. And I'm loving it. And the whole time now, I think this is where I'm thinking too much green. There's just too much green inside the tank there, Carol. How are we going to remedy it? Because there was no way I was going to lift this up and redo it. No way. No way. Yeah. And look how pretty it is. And then I thought of adding those blue uh, die cuts there. They kind of look like uh, candles at each end, the navy there. But um, it was just, then we get into it's too green and then it's too blue. <laughs> you know, I'm just taking this off of here so I can see exactly what I did and why I did it. Put it in front of me. Um, yeah, so I, what I did is I went to my stash. I had a... A uh, little bracelet that had shells on it, little tiny shells. Here's where I'm doing my sailor's knot. One, two. I got the knot down. I just didn't have the sailor down. <laughs> I just tied it in a knot. Yeah, there you go. And I'm making sure that my fish don't get stuck. And as you know, when you do a 59 hour video and you're 59 hours of work, you cut it down to a couple of hours. You, you can only put so many things 
uh, inside the actual edit for me to voice over for you. So that's why I'm kind of bouncing back and forth here. So you need to be a little particular about, uh, ooh, yes, off to school, go on, there you go. Uh, you have to be particular of your placement. So you're not going to put a lot behind, a lot of paper behind the stripes, just a little bit. You want to save paper at any cost when you know you only have a small amount to work with. So um, the tags there I already had done. And I loved this right here, this uh, die. So just take out the dies that you do have and make them work for you. Just make them work for you. And they will. They will. And on top of that tag, you can see that Claire sent me those um, tabs that go at the end of whatever your, your pullouts, your ATCs, your smaller tags. They are wonderful. They save you so much time to have these and they're available over at Claire's store. So um, not sure how much you get per pack but I'm sure you probably get quite a bit. Now I'm working on getting the waterfall cards down so I'm going to put the card stock uh, over top of the black and then behind the black I put the craft. Then I found the little inverted punch and I'm going to use that. There you go. It's this one here. You know, that kind of makes this C looking thing on each one. And then I'm going to take the um, Tim Holtz Distress inks in the darker color and go around all the edges. And this is another thing I did in slow-mo. This is so funny. Like, uh, yeah. But this is the stuff that, this is actually how I work. <laughs> This isn't in, <laughs> it's in slow-mo, but I work in slow-mo. I don't do anything hur in a hurry. It's always just taking my time. Oh, yeah. I had to stop it there for a minute to get something. Probably my uh, applicator tool. I don't know. But here we go. At least I sped it up. You're going to do the edges, and then you're going to attach them, and we're going to work on our waterfall card. The next thing we're going to do is start to add the waterfall. So I add the top one. You can do, uh, you know, or first put them down to make sure they're going to not go off the page. But I had, uh, I was pretty sure I had enough to just take me almost to the bottom. And then because it wasn't exact, I just added a sheet up right there. That piece of die cut paper I die cut on the side. And that's what's nice about making a lot of die cuts. You can put the ones you don't use aside and use them in another project. So I think it looks pretty. If it wasn't there, it would be too much black on that page. So here I'm trying to decide, is my flap going to go across horizontal or vertically? And I decided to go horizontal to hold it down because I did not put magnets behind Normally I would have put a magnet behind each one of these papers and had the magnet close the waterfall uh, on each page. So this is just as quick and just as easy to add a flip to go across. But because I'm putting it on the top, you do have some bulk there. So I had to raise up in the spine part there where you see the darker navy strip of paper. I had to raise that up. At double so that the flap would meet it with the magnet. Now here I'm picking out some of uh, my um, jewelry in, you know, all of fish and uh, everything to do with the ocean. I just went and picked some jewelry out in the silver. Then I had this tab punch so I punched out some tabs. To make them stable I glued two tabs together so that they were thick and then I added the glossy accents and let it sit overnight so that it was really dry and it would take the hole and take the um, the actual jewelry ring to put all of these wonderful little pieces in there. So here I glued two rings together and two, two of the tabs, the punch, hole punches there, to secure 
the hole around it so that it didn't rip. I'm going to add a really generous amount of glossy accents around there. And like I said, and then move it, like move it on your paper so it doesn't stick in the place you just put the glossy accents down because it will. And that'll give you some problems. So just put the glossy accents and then take a pointed tool and move them around a bit so they dry in a different spot. Now I'm going to take that inverted circle die, or punch, excuse me, and I'm going to do all of the black here. I had forgotten to do the black edges. Easy peasy. Just go around and make it right now, on the other, on the black parts. And there you have it. I'm going to have to do it on the other side too. <laughs> and then where it says uh, you, me, and the sea, that's what we're going to raise up another level because it, it was just too thick. The pages were too thick for that band to reach the other side and stay secure with the magnet. So um, I'll just keep going around here. I'll add it. These are the things you can do later. It doesn't mess up your project at all, having to go back. You know, um, that to me, that looks okay. I, I'm satisfied with that. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that you get a place to journal on the back and a place to put your pictures. Now let's get back to the fish tank, my aquarium. I found a die that was had these hanging um, pieces on it. It almost looked like you know the, the algae and stuff that's in the ocean, and it was more like uh, to get the eye off of all that greenery. And um, I just hung it, and you know what I did? I put uh, wax paper with it because wax paper will stick onto whatever you're die cutting. Then you can add little teensy weensy bits of glue to hold it on the edges if you like. I didn't have to. For some reason, it just stuck together. But you can do that. Um, and it just gave me a variation of color when I hung out the um, those vines in front of the greenery. And we're going to get back to that. Now I had to go to my stash, my jewelry stash, and find some more... Um, pieces that I wanted to put. This is all dry. I glued them down. Now I'm going to take my, um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this with the crocodile to hold it up so that you can see it. Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to make a hole inside there. Yeah, you have to go, you have to work it. And then what I did is I took my pokey tool, I'm pretty sure, and I put it down in the hole and went around and around and around and pushed it out to the tab and it worked great. On the pictures that you see at the end, you'll see that it looked like a nice opening on there for the actual um, uh, sea ocean jewelry. Sea ocean jewelry. Yeah, it's so cute, isn't it? The paper, it's, I don't know, it's just soothing. It's just a satisfying paper line. I really like it. Now I'm putting the rings through the tabs. This Now you can see why I needed to have these tabs because I'm putting the silver rings and then I'm going to open up the rings, add the jewelry. This is a little lighthouse and then I'll close it up. You know what this gave me? This gave me the weight that I wanted to keep my pages shut. That I wouldn't have had to do the tab if I had a thought of this first. <laughs> but I guess I'm dyslexic. I thought of it after, but it still gave me uh, a nice look. It's different. I did it on a slant. Now I'm moving up. You can see, if you see my house coat on, not necessarily is it nighttime and I'm ready for bed. Sometimes it just gets a little chilly. Right now we're having, it's snowing outside. So sometimes I just put my house coat over top of my clothes to get warm. But either or, whether I craft with it on, you know, if I'm late, it's late at night and I want to come out and uh, get a little bit of work done, so be it, you know. That's just the way we crafters roll, right? And so I'm pinching it together. Uh, this fluffy house coat right here, this they call, my family calls it old blue. Um, 
it's like a great big bear. I think there was a bear in something, and his name was Old Blue. And that, and then they gave my house coat its official name. Oh, Nan's got Old Blue on. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'll share that little story with you. So, anywho, yeah. And it matches the blue in my project. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Just putting the jewelry hanging there that matches the paper line. It's so nice. Now I was going to use this cotton um, ribbon, you know, uh, but I decided not to. I thought there was just too much going on, so I put it away. I did use that round bobble thing there for the porthole that uh, I got out and left out on the, that you can see there. I did use one of those because I did a porthole on the ATC tag project I did before this. So I wanted them to match. So there you go, it opens up, you have all these wonderful, um, oh yes, and you wanna put the tab on the back, don't forget the tab on the back. And all I did for that was cut the tab and slide it under the actual uh, jewelry so you couldn't see it. And then I put the glossy accents over uh, on it to seal it and then I put a round circle over top of that. So I've got some major things going on to make sure it's secure that if anybody ever grabbed it it wouldn't release itself very easily. Now we're going to go through on the flaps. I wanted to add some metal because I do have metal as far as the uh, actual jewelry you know with the little fish and lighthouse and starfish and all kinds of things going on so I'm going to do it on those tabs. This is where your punches really come in handy as well right you know sometimes we forget we have our punches they're either put away or out of sight but it's a beautiful thing to get them out and just add a little bit of interest to what you're doing and that's what I did for this tuck spot. I needed to have a bit of interest because I don't have a lot of the paper left over so I wanted to I just took a strip this is like even smaller than a sixteenth of an inch I think and I'm going to run that across the bottom of this punch design and it adds you know it adds to the paper you know it's actually a piece of the paper yeah make sure you put something underneath so the glue doesn't seep down and it will slide across so you could put pictures in there, tags or whatever you want. And there you have it, you know, and then you just have to use a smaller piece on the top to add to it. And we're working with our small pieces parts as we get down to using up a lot of the pages in the album. I'm slowly bringing the edit down. <laughs> I have it down to two hours now. Whoa! Am I happy? No, you're happy. <laughs> so here we go. I decided to put some E6000 glue on the back of this flip card to add some metal to the project. I think it looks very nice. Uh, this way, I got those clips at the dollar store here in town where nothing's a dollar. The dollar store where nothing's a dollar. And they're perfect for assignments like that where you want to keep something held onto paper to dry. So now we have these tags. Doesn't that look nice the way we did that with just some um, ink, ink to that shadow like going down the bottom of the ocean in that one tag there. And I'm picking out some of the smaller um, ATCs and the journaling cards. And now I want to show you another thing you can do if you have a few Copics that match your colors in your project, you can just color these ceramic uh, little jewelry pieces that I have here that I bought for making earrings. And so I just took the matching colors, went over the um, anchor, there's a little turtle, and I went all around it. And you know these are perfect because they have the hole in it so that you can run something through and dangle it or whatever it is you want to do. But on that page underneath the piece of craft paper there, I'm going to put some more of that uh, cotton 
a roll of uh, twine and we're just going to go straight across on here and just give it that nautical look. And all you do is take your hot glue gun and work it all the way across. And this is what I'm saying. You can add these little things onto the craft or the black paper cardstock to uh, use up the space, you know, the real estate that you have there. And uh, you can go straight across like this, but I chose to uh, go right along the edge of that half moon die. The, well, actually it's a circle and I just pulled it in halfway <laughs> and got a half moon die. Fancy that. So here you go, you have some of this nautical cotton going across here. Then I'm going to put two of the Copic colored, yeah, make sure, should have put something underneath there for the actual hot glue. But hot glue is pretty good if you catch it right away. So here we go, I'm going to flag out the two sides. It's kind of hard to get in there and make a perfect circle. So I decided to just flag the ends of them. Then I'm going to put um, E6000. Yeah, that's the fluffy thing I got at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar, where the end just popped off. <laughs> yeah, so I just put hot glue inside of it and now it works perfectly. There you go. I wouldn't have noticed it unless it popped off and I had the hot glue all ready. So it's E6000 time though. This will hold it nicely. And if you want to secure it with hot glue as well, the hot glue, it's easy to come off. I have to say, most projects, I learned that by trial and error. So now we're going to move on another day here, and I'm going to cover the small areas of the pullouts so that, um, you know, with the leftover little pieces, parts of paper. And like I said, if you have some type of 8x8 paper pack that you already used up the 12 by 12 papers, don't be intimidated, intimidated, excuse me, by making a larger album like this. Mostly, uh, yeah, my fish are just visiting in and out. They can't wait until I get to the part where I show you the finale of the um, fish tank, the aquarium, and the beveled the beveled spine. Isn't this paper with the octopus on it? Lovely. I just love it. Uh, and then I put googly eyes on it. Of course, it's going to fill up one of the spaces. You don't have to fill up all of your large spaces with paper, obviously, if you have a limited amount of paper. So, you know, if you have flip on, you know, a flip up, a flip down, do the center with a piece of paper if you have enough, and that will suffice. There you go. And then you can add some of your own die cuts with the navy and with the craft. Grab a stencil. If you have a stencil with some nice waves in it, like the ocean, you can do that as well. And here I'm taking my Copic to go over my uh, square, um, you know, where I had to lift it up there with the square double-sided glue tabs. And so that when you look at it sideways, you don't see the white. You see the color of the cardstock, which is navy. So that's another little tidbit I'll throw in there is to have a Copic uh, marker. And then this is just ripped off of that paper. We took the Mod Podge and put on the tissue. And now I'm going to um, put the anchor on this and just kind of vintage it out on the side. And I think I put a couple of shells. This is the part I start to love because this is not traditionally put on an album sometimes is to take it, you know, take out your jewelry and take out some tissue paper and make some maps or whatever. Um, well, I can't say it's not, of course people do this. <laughs> I'm not saying they don't do this, but Generally, you like to work with the paper pad and the paper packs that you receive, right? But I think this kind of pushes your creativity to another level. Then this little seahorse, I only had the head part that was in the actual uh, design. So I cut it off. I put a ton of uh, the uh, glossy accents. 
and on it so it stood out a little googly eye and then I want to have a tab here to pull this up off the magnet you know they are magnet together and so I put a fish so let's move on these are the die cuts I had a die that cut I used an embossing folder so it looked like a little bit of the ocean you're going to get one in all five I think there's five uh, papers. Whoa, there's a school of fish going through. Let me just see how many pages I have here. Uh, four. Isn't that something? But they have so many flips and flops, it looks like more. I used uh, not only the stencil, I'm going back to my bird's bees, or you can use the distress glaze. Either or works perfectly so that you don't get ink all over the place. It just makes it once you put it over top, it is just like it says, it's a glaze. And uh, the Burt's Bees, I wouldn't have believed it's the exact consistency of the glaze by Tim Holtz, but it is. I have used it on many an envelope. So, and then when you're done, you can put a little bit on your hands, make them nice and soft. There you go. So I'm going to take some of it off with a nice big sponge. I used a soft sponge to put it on. I keep it inside the Burt's Bees uh, until it gets so inky with colored inks I have to take it out. You can see that I put a little um, bit, I tied a rope, you know that, same, you can see it right there on the right, right, the cotton um, roll there. I just tied a knot so that you can open up these areas when you take it out of the uh, center of your, um, it's like a a push tab when you take your tab I guess it's called out of there you're going to have a different result because you're going to have not only that it's a shaker underneath that little um, pitcher white metal uh, there is uh, I put um, a shaker with little shaky bits and some shells and a little fish and now Here's another idea for you if you run out of paper. Take your stencil and your inks that you have, whatever spray uh, sprays that you have in your stash, and spray some ocean waves on there in a different color, blue. Try to keep to the same hues, but it's not necessary. And once again, yes, I'm going to put the Burt's Bees on there after I put a little bit of that embossing um, mixture there on the side. I can't remember what that was, but it just added a little bit of glitter on there and then I put the Burt's Bees. Putting my sponge back in there and we are going to move forward. We're going to follow those fish. And isn't that pretty? And that didn't take any time at all. It just helps you with the, um, you know, not having all the paper you need to do such a big album. And then look in your stash for some stamps and stamp on, you know, what this is another um, idea that I did for a tab going into the album. I just put some algae type of stuff up the sides, a couple of fish, a little saying, and then you have this um, design that coordinates with the paper line that you're using. It's all ocean scenery so that's kind of nice and then I'm going to add this die cut, put a ton of glossy accents on it and this is just for a visual on there. There's nothing behind it. I'm just showing you. It's just there for decoration and then when we go through the wall, you know, at the end or you can go back to the beginning and see how I did things. I'm just showing you that now I'm taking the actual punch off of this um, die cut, I'm sorry, this die cut, and then I am going to put some craft colored brown on here and use it like a stencil. And that way I get two things out of one. I get the sides nicely, um, you know, inked, and then I get this design, the same design on the other piece of craft paper. Then I'll go in with a little bit of this wave uh, stencil, which I love. This was a good thing to have in my stash. I didn't know how many times I would use it. 
but I've used it quite a bit, haven't I, in this album. Now we're going to press forward and I'm going to show you how I took care of the spine part with the beveled acetate. I had so much fun doing this. I love adding an acetate bevel to projects. So I took some of my gesso, I went over the actual ink area and just to tone it down a tad and give it some, actually for some texture, because I'm going to bring it up to another level of color, I'm going to darken it, because it seemed to get lost right there as far as having those uh, wavy parts that I put in there with our um, um, heat tool, with the uh, glue gun, excuse me. Yeah, it's late at night, I've come back to... <laughs> Uh, to finish up here, sorry. So here you have it. We're going to take a hybrid ink and I'm going to go over the canvas. Um, I always want to say string, but it's like a rope. And then I'm going to go over the canvas uh, double-sided sheet that I had that I put over the back of the spine. And this way, all of those curvatures, all those curvy worvies stand out. Now, I had put this, I had this bottle. I thought of, you know, a message in a bottle type of thing, but it was too thick. It was too bulky. It just didn't do anything for me, uh, especially with the fish. And then you have this gigantic bottle that's bigger than the fish. So, uh, and I already had it filled. It just has a little cork. You get about five of them at uh, the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. That's where I got it, got them. And so I decided that I'm going to take a hammer and put it in between some paper towel and I'm going to just smash it so that I only have a little piece of the top bulbous part of the glass um, lid there. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, bottle. And then I'm going to add this um, porthole kind of a thing. We're going to fill it up and it's going to be a shaker. So I had to get this off because I already glued the glass. You want to be very careful. I should have had something on my hand there or a towel, paper towel, something. Uh, but I was going in the opposite direction. Yeah, woo! <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of covering it up for you so you don't see. I didn't get, it came off nicely. I took as much glue as, you know, I thought, oh, well, I'm covering that up anyway. I'm going to put some of that paper to look like a map. I'm going to roll up the edges. I'm going to put all of this goodness on there. And right now, yes, I'm going to work on the porthole. It is exactly like the tag album I made previous to this video. I put some glue dots, some of these dots. Uh, they're not glue dots, but, you know, they're those things there that we have in our stash to look like porthole, um, what would they be, like um, metal hammered pieces, you know, screws, how's that? I took my gesso, I went over it with my fingers, I think. Uh, I ended up getting my fingers in all this because there's no way you can do it without getting a little messy and I enjoy it, so it doesn't bother me there. And we're going to put some black paint. We're going to put some silver. Um, you know, we're, we're going to do it. I should get up and just get the products here. But some silver embellishment, uh, embossing paste, that's it. And I'm going to gesso it all over first to make sure it's dry so that it'll hold down the colored uh, inks and the paints and the embossing paste and whatever you have in your stash my friends just use it then I die cut two circles to go around and I took two die cuts in a circle die so that I had um, some craft I used craft paper but it doesn't matter what paper you use to go around the edge of this so it gave you that look of a portal oh I finally wised up and put some gloves on oh yeah Look at that, I did. I don't know where I found them, but um, I remember I had these. They're so super small. Honestly, it was crazy, but I thought I'm using black and I don't want to get it all underneath my nails. So I went on the hunt, I found some gloves, 
and that's what I'm using. And the black covers those dots there perfectly. And then you can add the silver, but I wanted this to be gold because in the album tag uh, project that we did previously, I'll put that video, I'll link it up at the end, uh, it was silver. The porthole was silver, and I wanted this to be gold. So you can see I'm using the embossing paste in silver, but then I changed my mind, and I, while it was still wet, I got some embossing gold embossing powder. And then I heat set it because you get that bubbly, uh, almost like a, oh, you know, like the metals all worked its way up. It has that patina look to it. It's really, really nice, that aged portal look. So I remembered that the other project was silver. So then I thought, okay, let's just go. I went around it with some glossy accents to wetten it up. And generally, may I say this, if something is is liquid like a, some liquid type product you have and you put embossing powder on it it will generally heat up and emboss uh, it doesn't have to be first mark or whatever just you know I, I wouldn't have it you know I'm just kind of touching it here and there I don't want a ton of the uh, glossy accents here it is the 3d crystal lacquer oh here we go smash smash there then I took out the, the nice, that I had that bottle of gravel. I bought that at a craft store. I was so glad to have it. Then I had the bracelet thing that had the shells on it. I mean, this is all stash product. And then I had the uh, glass piece that was a little bulbous, just a little bit to look like it was a broken bottle in the depths of the sea on top of this pirate a uh, map that was found in the ocean and be very careful when you're taking this out that you have it on a pa paper towel works really well because all the little grooves in it grab hold of the glass and then I was able to put it in to my garbage and then later I put it in a brown bag and then put it in the garbage so that you know it didn't work its way out so here we go we are curling up the edges to put down the glass the cork so the cork looks like it's coming out of this bottle then you want to have the uh, shaker bits from the gravel and uh, you want to have some of the seashells there and i really loved this project when it was finished there, I just set it there and I set the piece of glass there. I put hot glue down and I put the glass into the hot glue. So there was no way if, you know, somebody worked their way up into there that they would get cut because this is pushed right down into hot glue. So it protected the glass from any type of accidents. And uh, I think it looks really cute. I kept the bottom on it. So it was just the sides that I needed to protect the actual glass on the paper. And uh, isn't that cute? And then I roll up the bottom and we're going to put that down. Uh, see how I go around it with the uh, hot glue? Plus you have the acrylic, the acetate bevel. So you're not going to see much of the glue as far as putting it all the way around. You can take some of it off. I dropped a little shell there on the curl up part of the paper just to look you know like it escaped out of the ocean I just love this piece and we'll incorporate that into the spine now I'm pretty sure that I show you the tag album there just to show you the difference of the gold that I had put on this to match the paper too with the craft right and uh, there's the paper we put down. I'm not sure if that was actual paper or tissue now that I'm looking at it. I'd have to go actually back into the video myself, but I'm pretty sure um, it was tissue. And there you have the silver one. And I went up a notch with the round die circles and made it a tad bigger because it went with the large album where the smaller circles went with the uh, tag smaller album the size of it actually now we're going to set this up it works perfectly for doing something like this you can see that big glass bead that i put on the bottom that's going to be my closure and it had actual glass bubbles in that bead 
I'm going to do a close-up of it. You're just going to love it. It had the exact colors of the colors in the Ocean uh, Graphic 45 papers. So here we go. I'm going to get, I put some of the gravel down there. And uh, just a minute here. I had to just slow this down just a bit. It was going a bit too fast there. Because I wanted to show you that I did put, see the gravel off to the right. I had a little scooper. I put the gravel in and I put a little fish that I had fussy cut there. And then uh, a couple of shells. Then we'll put the round outer edge in gold, like the actual porthole that looks like metal. We're going to put that around this. Does not look gorgeous. Then we'll put the paper and this will decide how beveled we want the acetate to be, right, when we put it on. So here we go. I'm going to put the hot glue. I think I put it on already around there and I just love the look of this. I went around with the black hybrid ink and um, I think it's the LDRS Creative Raven Black and just went around to touch just the tops of those little uh, circles we put in there, the little dots. And um, yeah, and now I'm going to add an anchor to the lower left. There, get over to the left, Carol. There you go. And uh, yeah, just a few things, a few fish on there and we're pretty well protected. Uh, I'm going to add some of the PVA glue that Claire had given me in my design team box. And this is uh, just, just a nice album. I had so much fun creating it, you know. I was just sorry that I had gotten so ill, but you know, those things happen. And um, every other year, well, I think I had it last year, the bronchial pneumonia. And when it sets in, there's nothing you can do. You have to back up and rest, take your medicine, and. You know, when you get your strength back, that's when you move forward. So um, there you go. I secured that with the hot glue. And I'm going to take a little piece off there because I have to have that bevel. We have to score the bevel on each side. So um, you don't want anything sticking too uh, far over that it's going to uh, interrupt that acetate. I had that half a head <laughs> of the fish. Oh, I'm going to find a place. It looks like he's coming right out of the album, doesn't he? I loved fussy cutting this page, and I'm not a fussy cutter. I, I used to like it, you know, a few years back, but I don't anymore. But these fish, you have to fussy cut them because you're adding all the fins and all the layers, and you're just texturizing it and then deepen it up with some, you know, if you have some, colored pencils and you want to add some depth to it you know like darker underneath the fish like they're in the water you know and so underneath the fish's belly would be darker you, um, whatever you want to do whatever you have time for I put some shells I had some leftover shells I set them down I'm just situating the fish as I am Finally coming down to decorating the inside of the bevel that will go on the spine. I want to take a minute to thank Claire for having me as a design team member for her wonderful channel and her amazing work on YouTube. Making albums, designing boxes, putting out tutorials that you can buy and anytime you want you can go back and watch these glorious tutorials. So I do appreciate that for sure. I think it's such a blessing to have a place to go, a crafting place of refuge, so to speak, that we can learn from one another. And if you make albums, Claire, her channel, you're going to glean some pretty awesome uh, inspirational instruction from her tutorials. So I will leave all the links for you. And thank you very much, Claire, for this collection and allowing me, giving me the privilege to be schooled <laughs> by your wealth of knowledge, my friend. Thank you very much. So here you have it. We'll do a slow take through once again. <laughs> I think I was in my pajamas. <laughs> I was in my house coat <laughs> pajamas on this one. Uh, this was the beginning tutorial 
I'm just putting it now again at the end. So here, enough of that nonsense right there's that glass bead. It has a hole running through it. it, has glass bubbles on there, just like bubbles. I can't explain it. It was just perfect. You have the shells up in the corner. I love acetate bevels. You just score a quarter of an inch to get that bevel on each side. You add either, you can add E6000 or your hot glue gun, either or. If you use a thick acetate, as I do, they're called page protectors at my stationery store, They it will take the hot glue. So there's our shaky uh, little um, porthole on the back. And you can fold it, nothing's gonna happen. Here's my little acetate sheet. Um, just something got on there I'm taking off and then I'm going to glue that down just decide okay do I want light or dark I think I chose the dark and this is easy peasy and if you have a nice punch that punches out well you can round the corners also once you get the glue coming out <laughs> oh, I was watching a tutorial by Claire a little while ago and she was showing the new Graphic 45 Outdoors, I think it's called. Oh, such a beautiful paper. Please go check it out. You're just going to be in awe. Like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And I'm such an outdoors gal as far as, you know, hunting and fishing. I'm not outdoors as far as gardening and uh, walking. <laughs> Those are two different outdoor things, aren't they? So there you have it. You have the acetate to, to put your pictures. I love acetate because you do, you get to see the papers, right? Clear through. I like the little ATC cards that come in there. You can put them down. You can use your white pen and journal on the back of these things because there's tons of them, I tell you, that come in the 8x8 eight eight card uh, uh, paper, excuse me, collection. And there's where I was telling you I had the shaker with the little fish in it. And then I put knots on this um, string, this uh, cotton. And you can lift it up because this is the way the die comes out. I put the waves on it with the um, stencil. And we're going to have all those tuck spots. I glued this little ATC. I hope that's what they're called, you know. <laughs> I'm saying it all the time. I think the journey cards are the big ones and the ATCs are the small ones, if I'm right. They're two by three inches. That just kind of flew out of my brain there. A little wealth of unknown knowledge because I'm not sure if I'm right. Look at the glossy accents. Doesn't that bring anything up a notch? And your tags, my friend, if you have any type of uh, jewelry, just put it, honker down on a piece of paper, then put this tag on it and it will hold all of your journaling. Uh, you know, you could probably get at least four of these tags on one of those, um, like say it's a turtle that I put down. And I'm just showing you that this piece is goes all the way through. You can put, uh, you know, write down things, fold the paper in half, and tuck that in, Carol. I have two tuck spots there. Whoa, get out of the way. Come on, go to school. Get going. Um, that's why I'm trying to get it in. There's two spots. I made it so you had two spots. Then I had these beautiful little dots, these clear dots to add as the bubbles going out of the fish's mouth. And I'm trying to see, yeah, there's a tuck right there, tuck right there. All the way through. Bring it through, Carol. There you go. Good girl. And then you're going to go, I have a three-quarter inch in between each page. So you can fill it with all kinds of goodness. There's the shaky, shaky jewelry that we have. That's my jewelry for earrings. Then um, I put that little fish there. There's a magnet underneath. You have journaling on the craft and or vice versa, whatever you want to do. I think the pictures would look lovely on the blue card stock myself. Here's the spray that I think we sprayed this one and then I put stamp some images and don't care you just said that doesn't go in there come on now you me in the sea oh yeah and uh, well that's not true in my case <laughs> the you and me is right but not the sea 
You'd have to throw me overboard to get me to the Z. Oh dear. So here we go. We've got the tabs that Claire supplies in her shop. You have the googly eyes on all the fish and octopi. And then you're going to close it up. This would be beautiful for a baby shower. It really would. Remember we put these rays of sunlight in with some ink and then added gla glossy accents over the entire thing with bubbles. Uh, we put a little corner thing there, open it up. I tell you what, once you catch on to how to make flips, flops, tags, drops, ups, downs, rounds, you got it. You have a blast with it. As a matter of fact, you want to put everything that flips out, you want to put more to flip out. It, it, it's just this thing. You just, yeah, I'm trying to get that metal down so you don't hurt yourself. <laughs> or I don't hurt myself. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> now, so here you go. There you are. Now we're going to move forward. Look at those tags. I just love, love, love this album. It's And then I covered it all with the glossy accents. That, I think, is with the 3D lacquer that I covered. It. The same thing. Either or. Tomato, tomato. That's that nylon stocking that I used and I used the paper so that it would bevel out so you could put a ton of stuff into the nylons and just memorabilia stuff. You know, if you go on a trip and you have all these little shells or stuff your children collected, your grandchildren collected, throw it in those net stockings. <laughs> yeah. Can't think of a better thing to use. And that stocking for, oh yeah, beveled, everything's beveled, even, <laughs> even the bevel spine, more acetate, my friends, at the back, another journaling card, I think this album brought me such joy, I know it did, and look at that bevel, there's a close-up of the fish inside the, uh, with the, goodness in there and here we go this is my project i did a month ago before i got sick and i got sick right after excuse me and this is a little tag album and i had that on youtube i'll leave it at the end of the video so it matches as you can see and then i'm going to do a treasure chest box to put all of this goodness in so you open it up it looks like an old treasure chest that fell to the bottom of the ocean, right to the bottom, and we found it. And I'm going to vintage it out, patina it out, and I can't wait to start that project. So, here we go. We've got, this is our envelope project. I think it was three envelopes, if I'm right, three or four. And you turn the pages, you put your flips, your flops. Oh, I'm telling you, this, you know, a project is a lot of fun when you grasp the theory of how you do things. For me, it was putting the, uh, oh, excuse me, get to school. Uh, it was putting magnets on. I just couldn't get the drift of that. Now I can't put enough magnets on because I know how to do it. The old saying is true. You love what you know, right? Now, this tag is so big. You have got to look at it. I'm going to leave the link to make one of these. It has such a great amount of real estate to put pictures or journaling. I use the roll of black tape. Love this black tape. I'm going to be ordering tons of it, Claire. I have to have it near me at all times. Yes, not only for albums, for cards. For any projects that you have to secure paper together, that black tape is it. And I'm going to leave the little story behind how Claire invented it. It's, it's a fabulous story. Just fabulous, darling. And here you have it. That's what I have left over if I think of doing... You know, I'm going to put these pieces parts on the trunk that I'm making as far as the closure for this. It's not going to be a box. It's going to be a pirate trunk. So thank you, Claire. Thank you, my wonderful subscribing friends. I see you all out there. Yes, I do. And I'm going to see you on the next project. And thank you for allowing me into your space and your craft room. Thank you for subscribing and liking and all those things. Take care.